All right, today I'm going to show you guys how to get started with the Gremlin console. So how to download it and get it set up and whatnot. So first, you just want to Google and look up Gremlin programming language. And you're going to want to click on this first link. Make sure it's uh, Tinkerpop or the people who made it. And then this website has a lot of information. We'll pretty much answer any questions you have about Gremlin if you want to figure some stuff out before downloading it. You have your documentation, lots of tutorials, all that good stuff. So today we're going to be worried about uh, just downloading it first. So download Apache Tinkerpop, uh, the Gremlin console, all that stuff. So we're going to go to the current releases, just whatever the latest, most stable releases. Uh, we're going to click this link for the Gremlin console. <clears throat> it's going to redirect us to this Apache website. And then if you just click this first link, you'll download the zip file. I've done it before, but so you'll see, open it up. We have the zip file. I'm going to use the uh, command terminal. So I'm going to just extract this to straight to my user folder. And then I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename it Gremlin. So you extract that. Takes not too long, it's not that big. Okay. So then from there, we go back here and we look at the tutorials and then getting started. Shows you these next steps right after you uh, unzip it. So we're gonna wanna change into that folder. So man prompt. Okay. And uh, one thing about uh, Gremlin is that it does not run in any Java version except 11, I'm pretty sure, is what we found. So you want to make sure that you have your Java version as 11, so you might need to download, go back and download Java 11, and then change up your path. But however you need to do it, use a virtual machine, whatever, however you need, just make sure that you're using Java 11. So we're gonna change to that Gremlin folder. And then if we look what we have, you're just gonna change into the Apache folder. And then from there, for following the tutorial, it says that you need to change into the bin and then run gremlin.sh. I'm a Windows user, so I'm gonna use uh, gremlin.bat. So then we run gremlin.bat. That's gonna get us started. And then, so now we're in the Gremlin console. And so this is just a nice way to play around and make sure we've got everything. Uh, so you can read about all this, it tells you all the, the stuff that you need to know about the console stuff. We're gonna be just trying out the sample graph that they include. So this is their modern graph that they have included. You know, you have person one, they have their name, their age, it's got, different edges with different weights and different labels. So we're going to be looking at that. So first thing you do whenever you want to make a graph, so you define it. So we're going to be just copying their modern graph is what they call it. And we can see six vertices, six edges. That checks out one, two, three, four, five, six vertices, six edges. Then you need to specify a way to traverse the graph. And you can read about all the different ways that they have included. We're just gonna use this traversal with embedded graph. So standard. So now we've got this and we've told Gremlin how we want to traverse it. So now we can run some just simple stuff to show what's happening here. So we're gonna get all the vertices in the graph. We're gonna get the vertex uh, with the identifier of one. We're gonna get the value, we're gonna do all this stuff. So first we're gonna get all the vertices of the graph, it's just D, G dot B. So G is our traversal method, and then we'll just dot V, and that shows all our vertices. And next we'll try to get the vertex with the unique identifier one. So it should be vertex one, it is. 
and we're going to be getting the value of the name property on that vertex one. So we'll mix it up just to change it from this. So Marco would be vertex one, person one is Marco. We're going to try person four, make sure we get Josh. So instead of vertex with the identifier one, we're going to want the vertex with the identifier four and we get Josh. So all is good there. So then fourth one, we're going to get the edges of the label nose for the vertex unique identifier of one. So we're going to see who vertex one knows. So we see that edge seven, vertex one knows, vertex two, and then edge eight, vertex one knows uh, vertex four, or the vertex with the identifier four. And then we're going to get a little more complicated. We're going to get the names of the people whom the vertex with the unique identifier one knows. So essentially, this is who Marco knows, if you're following. The vertex one is Marco. So vertex one knows Vadas and Josh, which would be two and four, according to the last one. We'll double check that real quick. Vadas. Josh, yep. And then this gives us a shorthand way of doing the exact same thing. So uh, six, uh, note that when one uses the out edge command with the end vertex command, it's on the previous command, this can be shortened to just out. And it goes both ways with the end command. So this is stuff that you'll learn more as you go through the tutorial. So vertex one, going out knows what values, or what names. So Vadas and Josh, instead of just out edge, this is actually, we're getting the values of, we're following the edge and then getting the values of this name value from the second and fourth vertex. So then lastly, we're gonna get the names of people vertex one knows who are over the age of 30. So we're gonna, Another condition in the query. So <laughs> this is vertex one. Who they know, we're going out. And then that also has their age has to be at least 30, greater than 30. And then we're getting the name as the value again. And so that would be Josh. So if you look at who does Marco know, he knows Vadas. Vadas isn't 30. Created that. Nope. He knows. So we'll follow this one. Josh. Josh is 32. So Josh satisfies all our conditions. That's why Josh is returned. So I recommend that after you get this set up, you go through this little example, go through all these examples, make sure you understand how Gremlin works. It's pretty simple, but this is a good tutorial to use. So.